So this is me last week standing on my porch watching the entire sky rotate and watching the birth of a tornado. You see that hanging down right there and you see all the clouds close to me moving left and all the clouds furthest away from me moving right. This was a scary situation. Stick around to see what happened. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. I have found the spot where that tornado that was forming right over our house finally touched down. I'm gonna put the drone up in the air here. You can definitely see that this is where it finally hit the ground. This is only just about four miles east of my house. So if you start following the path of this tornado, you can tell that it's probably about 80 to 100 feet wide is really all. When you look at the end rows on the field across the road, those end rows are 80 feet wide, uh, two planter passes of 16 rows. And so just kind of compare that to the width of the damage path here through the corn. It just misses this big hog building by about 200 feet. And as you're watching, you sort of lose track of it as you're going through this bean field. You can see it if you look really hard, but you can certainly see where it goes into the corn here in the next field. We're about three quarters of a mile away now. We're getting to the next mile. Uh, here's the next road. It just misses this really nice house here by just maybe 150 feet. And then when we get up to this waterway here, you look around and kind of lose track of it. I think it must have, I think it must have basically pulled back up here and this is about the end of it. But if we turn around and face back towards my truck, you can see the whole mile long path from this view right here, you can see the whole track that the tornado took. I got back to the truck and on the way to the farm, I realized we had some damage on one of our fields. So I went ahead and put the drone up here. You can see the rows are just all tangled up. The corn isn't all laid down. It's just maybe 35, 40% of the plants are laid down against the next row. And when you get over here on the east side of the field, you can see this 16 row wide swath this is one planter pass right along the edge of the field that is just completely laid flat you can just tell that it looks a lot different than the other corn and at first i thought that maybe i had a different hybrid in when i came to start here from another field but i kind of think there's something else going on i got to get down on the ground i'm going to come out to this field with the gator and and see what the roots of these plants look like because i have my suspicions that this might be an insecticide issue. So just initially taking a look right here at the edge of the field where the corn is down the worst. This is just 16 rows here where it's really down and none of it is snapped off. If you look, it's just the roots are tipped out of the ground. These 16 rows right here along the edge that are down so bad I was digging for seed when I first started this field and I don't like to dig with insecticide in the furrow. So I bet, <laughs> I bet this is a place I had the insecticide turned off. I'm gonna call Dakota and have him come out and look at this with me and uh, see what he thinks. What do you think on the leaves? Does that look like hail to you or is this just shredded from think, high wind? I think it's just wind, mostly because if you go right here, I'm not seeing any holes or gaps or I mean maybe a little bit right there. That's unbelievable. The corn's like almost it's not perfect over there, but this is yeah. this is disastrous here where it was turned off. So this is what's crazy. These all get ate off and, and they all regrow. But they got out ate off super early. This makes total sense. I started down there planting in the corner. I had the insecticide shut off because I was planting this way and I wanted to get out and dig seed. And I didn't want to be digging an insecticide. And then on the way down to the waterway, I turned the insecticide back on. And All right, let's go figure out what happened out here in the field where just a few fell over. Oh, so you think it's like the late emergers that are doing this? Yeah, 
Yeah. That are just behind in stage? Yep, I think so. Do you want to take a down one and then take a good one? Yeah. Compare them? All right, so what do we got here? So this one would be just a normal one that stood well. This would be a, probably an underdeveloped or late emerger. And then here's the no insecticide trial. Yeah, I mean, this is a perfectly normal. That's hard, nice. Hard, hardly fed root. You can see a little bit of feeding here on some of these other ones, but I mean, you literally probably couldn't ask for a better structure. This one, you can tell not a ton of feeding, maybe a little bit right there, but it, it just, it's just behind. And that's, it hadn't even tasseled yet. Hard to overcome that. And then this is just brutal. Ton of feeding. I'm glad we bought insecticide for everything. <laughs> insecticide paid, that's for sure here. So one of the important things of controlling rootworm populations is spraying at the right time. If we start to spray right when the beetles start to show up, we're going to miss the boat and we're going to have an explosive beetle population later down the road and they're going to lay a bunch of eggs and we're going to have trouble next year. We want to wait until the numbers are just right. We want to get as many female beetles killed as possible before they lay their eggs. So that's why we're using these sticky traps to try to establish that timeline so we can make sure we do it properly. So these are basically just big sticky traps that we peel open, that we try to peel open. Ah! All right, see this? And then we hang them on the corn plants and we count every day how many beetles are stuck to this. Let's do it. I like to get a few of the leaves right here out of the way so that they're not getting stuck to it. Just kind of going to use this corn plant as a stand for this trap. Get our fancy wire tie pulled through and then I like to wrap it around the tight around the stock so it doesn't slide up and down. And then this bottom piece like pushes through the other side to kind of lock the bottom together like that. And then we just come back and check it every day on both sides and count how many beetles are stuck to it. This is Case. He's my cameraman this week and he is doing a great job. So this is going to be your trap to check this week, Case. All yeah. Right? So don't forget where we put it. I, I shall not. There. You see it's right there. It looks just like that. There's the rootworm beetle. It's yellow. It has stripes on its back. Is that a northern corn rootworm beetle or a western corn rootworm beetle? Put it in the comments. All right, here we are back at the cornfield. Day one to check this trap that's been hanging up for about 24 hours now. Let's go see what we've got. Still pretty wet. The ground is still pretty wet here. That was a good rain. Okay, so I got one beetle on this side. And looks like I got two on this side. So three beetles in the first day. That one, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that one is a male. Pretty sure both of those are. And I kind of think this one must be too. I've got to educate myself a little bit better. You guys, it is getting ridiculously hot out again. I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's what we got to deal with because that's what makes the corn grow really well. Hot and humid is what corn likes. So I just got done checking my rootworm beetle trap. It's been just a little over a week, eight or nine days now, and I've got 28 beetles on mine. That's not great. I'm not super happy about that. Uh, Cole's been checking a trap up north and he's only got seven in eight days and uh, let's go to our roving reporter case and see how many beetles he's got on his trap. All of these are rootworm beetles. Look how many there are. If you can count all of these rootworm beetles on the screen right now, Put it in the comments. So there's a few reasons that we hate rootworms and rootworm beetles so much. First of all, the larvae chew up the roots and the corn falls over. 
Uh, the other thing that they do is in beetle form, they chew off the silks and interfere with pollination. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right now, this corn is actually pollinating, meaning it's engaging in reproduction with itself. This piece up on top that sticks out is called a tassel, and this is where the pollen falls from, and the pollen lands down here on the silks. Uh, the silks stick out the end of the ear, and each one of these little silks or hairs is attached to an individual kernel, a place where a kernel is developing in there. And the rootworm beetles will actually crawl up here and chew off all of these silks. And if it's really bad, you can have enough of the silks destroyed that you can't have proper pollination. And then you end up with a bunch of kernels missing and a nasty looking ear of corn that doesn't produce very well. So this is definitely a pest that you wanna to try to manage as much as you can because they're kind of a double threat. There's two really bad things that they do to your corn crop. So this is also the time of year that we are looking at the corn plants and evaluating the disease pressure. Um, different diseases attack the leaves and different parts of the plant and also cause a reduction in yield. And so if you're experiencing high disease pressure this time of year, or if corn is really expensive like it is right now, and it looks like you're gonna have a decent crop at least, this is the time of year where when the tassels are out, the planes are in the air spraying fungicide anyway to try to ward off and hold back the disease pressure. So it only makes sense if the timing is right to go ahead and put some insecticide in with the fungicide to knock down the beetle population. Obviously from an efficiency standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, a lot of years, the timing doesn't work out right. When you need to be spraying the fungicide, often is just a little bit too early to be spraying for beetles because the females aren't all emerged yet. However, this year, the beetles are just a little bit ahead of schedule. Dakota was out again yesterday and was looking at the beetles and found a lot of females that are really fat and puffed up with eggs, just getting ready to lay eggs. So actually right now is gonna be the perfect time to spray these beetles as well. Hey, I got some bad news and I got some good news. The bad news is I'm gonna be gone the next few days and I'm probably gonna miss out on collecting footage of the planes spraying fungicide and insecticide on our cornfields. I'm kinda of bummed about that because the uh, spray planes, I feel like are always really fun and exciting to watch. But the good news is, let me tell you about why I'm gonna be gone. I'm going to be traveling to Pontiac, Illinois to the PTI farm, which is a place that precision planting tests equipment and tests a whole bunch of different management practices. You can learn a lot about corn farming by actually doing it instead of just theorizing about how it might work. I'm very excited to go there. I'm gonna be there with Alex Rush from LR Rush Farms, as well as Aaron Holbert. I'm sure many of you know both of these characters. I'm excited to meet both of them. I've already met Alex, I've never met Aaron, but here's where you can get involved. On Tuesday, July 27th, at 12.30 p.m., Aaron and Alex and myself are going to be doing a live q and I'll put the link down here in the description. You can register and you can win some cool stuff. Ask your burning questions, whatever you've wanted to know about me or Alex or Aaron or precision planting or farming or anything in general. Go down here, look for the link in the description and get signed up to join us for that live. It's gonna be really fun. I can't wait to see you there. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and I really hope to be able to see you on that live on Tuesday, the 27th of July. Thanks for hanging out today. We'll see you next time.